I like paying people to do that for me, to include the hunting part. I like shooting guns, but I've done that, but it's not what works well. <laughs> it just doesn't seem like that. It just doesn't feel. I don't want to spend my time sitting out the room. It's a normal one, huh? I'm sure it's fun, but it's team three people can play this. Or get it into three. Call to order. This is the 16th regular meeting of the 2011-2012 Common Council, and as is customary, our city clerk, Sue Richards, will read us the quote of the evening. Thank you, Mayor. It's one thing to feel that you are on the right path, but it's another to think that yours is the only path. Thank you, Sue. Uh, just a note to everybody, there will be a special Common Council meeting regarding the 2012 budget at 5.30 p.m., <laughs> in the council chambers one week from today on Monday, November 28th. Roll call, please. Belt. Here. Boren. Here. Carlson. Here. Decker. Excused. Hammond. Here. Hammond. Here. Heidemann. Here. Koth. Here. Kittleson. Here. Matichek. Here. Raisler. Here. Sampson. Here. Van Akron. Here. Vanderweel. Here. And Versi. Here. 15 eyes. We have a quorum, if we can all join Alderman Raisler and the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Corey. Looking for approval of the minutes of the prior Common Council meeting. Move to approve. Second. We have a motion to approve and a second under discussion on the minutes. If there is no discussion, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Mayor's appointments. Attorney McLean. Honorable members of the council, I hereby submit the following appointments for your consideration. Public person Daryl Carlson to be appointed to the Finance Committee as Vice Chairman to fill the unexpired term of Eric Rinfleisch, whose term expires 4 16 2012. Public person Frederick Belt to be appointed to the Law and Licensing Committee to fill the unexpired term of Eric Rinfleisch, whose term expires 4 16 2012. And Alder person Kevin Sampson to be appointed to the Sustainable Sheboygan Task Force to fill the unexpired term of Eric Rinfleisch, whose term expires 4 16 2012. That lies over. Kevin Reitz to be considered for appointment to the Housing Authority to fill the unexpired term of Joe Rupnick, whose term expires 4-23-2012. Signed by the Mayor also. That lies over also. And then for confirmation, uh, the following appointments to the Business Improvement District. Cleo Messner, Eileen Simons, Caitlin Bratz, Mike Miller, Mary Christian, and Bill Holbrook. Signed by the Mayor. Looking for a motion on that? Uh, move to confirm. Second. We have a motion to confirm and a second under discussion on approving the appointments for the bid district. If there is no discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 We need a roll call. We need a roll call? Yep. We need a roll call. Roll call, please. Belt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Cut? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Matichek? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Ben Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. And Versi? Aye. 15 ayes. Appointments are confirmed. <coughs> public forum? Sue? Yep. Uh, this evening we have two on public forum. First on the list is Agnes Sorens. Agnes, if you could come up to the front, please. Agnes, I need your home address. 
1415 Camelot Boulevard in Sherwood. And you might want to pull your mic down just a bit. Do I have to? <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> and you will have five minutes. Okay. Um, I'm here this morning to ask the council not to pass the $40 fee for the Clearwater inspection. I sent a proposal to you all and received an email back from Mr. Palachek outlining all the usual excuses that it would be time consuming to build the people and the realtors that did not show up for inspections. I myself would volunteer 10 hours a month to help with the billing situation. The seller's fees could then be added to the final water bill, but they're not looking for fair solutions, just another stream of revenue. The big picture is that say 100 homes sold, perhaps 70 of those homes are ROEs, are EOs in foreclosures. The properties are owned by companies and banks that are not in this area. In fact, most of them are in other states. I would like to find out how you think and propose you're going to collect that $40 um, clear water inspection fee. Is it really going to be worth all the trouble? These companies are now striking the clear water addendum from our offer to purchase contracts. I asked for a count to date on the inspections and there have been 663 inspections. This would have brought in to date this year a stream of revenue of 26,520, a tidy sum of money. The citizens will hold you accountable for how this money is spent if and when this fee is approved. Again, I asked the council not to approve this fee. At the last meeting, we were told over and over again it was all about the money. They wouldn't, it was not about the money that this fee would generate, but it was all about accountability. But when I asked for account of the no-shows at the inspections, the answer was, oh, we didn't keep count. Well, if the no-shows are such a problem, I certainly would have kept account. It all comes down to the new stream of revenue, and I'm asking you as a council to say no to this $40 fee. The $40 fee may not seem such a big deal to most of you, but ask a seller who has not worked for one or two years and is trying to sell their home before it goes into foreclosure to save the credit scores and try to move on. The fee is just another hardship for homeowners. The council should choose its battles, the problem which rooms just around the corner concerning the city's trash trucks, which will be a bigger hurdle for somewhere between $500,000 to $600,000, and the solution to that will no doubt fall on the homeowners of the city of Sheboygan also. Please do not pass this fee. Thank you, Agnes. Thank you, Agnes. Next. Uh, next is Tom Bowers. <coughs> Tom, can I have your home address, please? 2120 uh, North 36. And you will have five minutes, sir. Thank you. Citizens of Sheboygan, originally I was going to come before uh, you tonight uh, with some information regarding unpaid taxes, which I, I will. But I also would like to bring up, uh, we will be having a recall election, supposedly in February. And we have, as of now, four male candidates. I would like to see some female women in the community take out papers. It seems we're not having too good luck with the males. So I think if we have enough qualified females that they would give this serious consideration so that the males that we have running are nothing wrong with them, but maybe a change of view with some uh, women, the head of city government. So ladies, give it a thought. Okay, now to get into what uh, originally I was going to speak on, uh, I, the unpaid taxes in the county of Sheboygan. And I was fortunate that the county uh, treasurer gave me the following information. Just so you can follow along, 
unpaid taxes in the year 2002 to 2003 at the end of September, $1,520. So approximately $170,000 house in the county did not pay their taxes then. 2003 went up to 18,221. 2004, 32,312. 2005, 73,176. 2006, 114,238. 2007, 183,696. You can see the progression of unpaid taxes and what is happening to our county. 2008, 294,969. 2009, 633,919. Now get this, the year 2010, 2011, 1,397,449,000. Look at the progression from the year 2002, $1,520, to uh, 1,397,449. Now that doesn't mean that at the end of the year that was outstanding, but it shows you what's outstanding at the beginning of the year. Now to take it one step further, I said, well, could you tell me uh, Taxes that are outstanding, Sheboygan Falls, 327,000. Plymouth, 264,000, of which 54,347 are owned by Mar Mayor of Sheboygan. Now, I don't understand a household income of over a hundred and some thousand dollars with good health insurance, good pension, does not pay their taxes for two years in the, in the city of Plymouth. So maybe uh, the explanation is it's a uh, LLC, which doesn't make it any, any less different than taxes are owed. Maybe Mr. Ryan could inform the citizens of Sheboygan County why he hasn't paid his taxes. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. That's it. Okay, thank you, Sue. Moving on to uh, Mayor's announcements. First of all, I would like to address uh, the former Alderman Bowers' uh, uh, comments on the city of Plymouth. I still do own one property out in the city of Plymouth, which is a business um, that indeed there are some property taxes owed on that business. Uh, There are many property taxes owned by many businesses and LLCs. This is an LLC, an S corporation uh, that I do not operate myself. So that is the explanation to Alderman Bowers if he's looking for an explanation. I have been a full-time mayor for the last three years. I do not operate that business. I have been operating this business as the mayor of the city of Sheboygan. Uh, You are not allowed to work another job. And on top of that, um, if anybody knows anything about the commercial market out there, and we have realtors in this room, uh, there's a lot of properties that are upside down in, in the commercial business. All of my taxes in the city of Sheboygan are paid. My home taxes have always been paid. Uh, That entity is a commercial property. It is not my personal taxes. It is not my home taxes. Um, If that answers Alderman Bowers, I appreciate you for your uh, uh, information there, Alderman Bowers. Um, I appreciate that. So hopefully that explains it to you. Alderman Bowers, I'm speaking. Please sit down. Former Alderman Bowers, your your time to your time to finish your time has come. You're done talking. Please sit. On a lighter note, a 
Our Department of Tourism came out with a slogan earlier this year called, How to Use Sheboygan. I remember when that came out, uh, it kind of made a splash, and people said, that doesn't make any sense, some people said. How do you Sheboygan? That's not even proper English. I looked at it and I said, I had nothing to do with this. I didn't know about it. I think it's gold. I said, I think it's great. It's a catchy phrase. Everybody remembers it. Well, the Marcom Awards, which is a national award giving, given out to... Marketing Campaigns has named the How Do You Sheboygan Campaign have given them a gold Marcom Award. This is a national award for the How Do You Sheboygan uh, Campaign. So this was a campaign that was uh, designed by uh, Amy Gutierrez and uh, George Tuig in our Department of Tourism and uh, Amy Wilson, excuse me, now Amy Wilson. So they won a national award, a gold Marcom Award for marketing and promotion category for the 2011 How Do You Sheboygan Award, and they should be congratulated. They also got an honorable mention, an honorable mention for a T-shirt design um, on the How Do You Sheboygan campaign, which was something that was uh, inspired by Slater Gutierrez. Slater is... Uh, Amy's seven-year-old son. I don't know if any of you have met Slater. If you ever met him, you'd remember him. Uh, Slater decided that uh, his How Do You Sheboygan t-shirt would be called I Fight Zombies, and he received an honorable mention for that. Uh, for that. So we congratulate them. Uh, Sunday, November 27th is the Christmas Parade, also known as the Holiday Parade. I will have to say that. Um, begins at 5 o'clock p.m., I believe the route will be the same it always is. Uh, it will go north on 7th Street to Erie Avenue and then back down uh, south on A Street. We'll end at the library. We will have the city tree lighting immediately following that, uh, at which we hope uh, many people will show up. And at the same time, uh, we will have cookies and hot chocolate. Uh, which have, uh, will be done by my wife and my mother-in-law as they have in years past. So we hope everybody joins us for the lighting of the Christmas tree and the singing of some Christmas carols. Also, uh, immediately following this meeting will be a committee of the whole meeting. We will take about a 10-minute break following this meeting, so people that don't want to stay for the committee of the whole will have time to uh, vacate, and that will be uh, aired live also on television. That is all I have for uh, mayor's announcements. Um, are we going to do the? We'll do the zoning hearing first. Okay. First, we will do uh, hearings. We have two hearings this evening. Number one, to amend the city zoning map to change the use district classification of 1216 Union Avenue from NR Neighborhood Residential to NC Neighborhood Commercial. And number, okay, that will be that will be the first hearing. Uh, is there anybody that would like to be heard regarding this hearing? We have one gentleman, two people that would like to be heard regarding the uh, changing of the, the classification at 1216 Union Avenue. Sir, if you'd like to be heard, please step up to the mic. Can you give me your name, sir? My name is Phil Ninnerman. Philip Ninnerman, right? And your address, sir? I live at 1804A South 17th Street. South 17th. Go ahead. This has to do with the, the property at 1216 Union Avenue. My homestead property is adjacent to that property. And uh, I am suggesting that it remains neighborhood residential rather than go to neighborhood commercial because it's a nice little neighborhood. It's, uh, and it's been being, being pushed out by the businesses one particular business, and I would just like to have it maintain the neighborhood like it always has been. And it's uh, as long as the properties are uh, taken care of, it's a good little place to raise kids, good little area. There's 
there's kids in every house adjacent to where I live, and uh, they're all good little kids. And I like to see them have a, a comfortable neighborhood, and that's my recommendation. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Ninnerman. Thank you, sir. Next. Ma'am, please step up. Can I get your name, please? Lori Mackey. What is it? Lori Mackey. Lori? Yes. And how do you spell the last name, Lori? M-A-K-I. And your address? 2006 South 12th Street. Okay, go ahead. Okay, I live on the other side of the Mini Mart, next to the house that's going to be rezoned or wants to be rezoned. I would ask that it not be rezoned. As it is, we live next to the Mini Mart that causes its own problems um, we have a terrific amount of garbage that comes from the Mini Mart, not only from the Mini Mart and its dumpsters that are supposed to be kept closed, locked. They are not. You can go there today and see dumpsters that are overflowing, that garbage is in our yard on a daily basis. There is not a time that we have to cut our grass, that garbage is not part of our grass cutting. A garden that is not full of garbage, and granted, the Mini Mart was there when we moved in. It is something that we have to live with, but I would ask that we don't have to live next to another building that goes up, because once it goes from a residential, one property becomes commercial, the next one goes commercial, and then it goes further and further. It's hard enough to keep our neighborhood that goes secular from being nice neighborhoods and people are trying to improve on their houses to businesses with garbage and people walking to the mini mart dropping their wrappers dropping their food their containers i have cigarette wrappers today in my gar driveway in my flower beds it's just a mess there's garbage there's unwanted traffic and adding more to it is just going to make the problems 10 times worse. And it greatly affects us because we live next to it, but it does affect the whole neighborhood. There's children that live in the neighborhood. There's more cars. There's more traffic. It's just a mess. And I'd ask that it doesn't be done. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else would like to be heard on the hearing regarding the use district classification of this address? There is not. May we have a motion to close this hearing? We can do both at the end. We'll do them both? That's fine. Okay. Okay, we will go to the second public hearing then. This is a hearing at which any resident or taxpayer of the governmental unit shall have the opportunity to be heard on the proposed budget. Anybody that would like to be heard, we do have a list. Um, now I will remind everybody that the uh, <laughs> discussion is limited to the budget. First on the list, Sue. I'm going to call a few people up so you don't have to climb over everybody to get up here. The first group, why don't we have Christina and Indigo come up? And Maeve, could you come on up and be ready after the girls are done? And Arthur Zettel, Arthur, could you come up and just be behind Maeve? That'd be great. <coughs> girls, you want to come over here? They can't reach the mic, sorry. So who wants to talk first? Um, you want to talk first or don't you get a little closer to the mic? Okay, go ahead. You want her to go first? You just go ahead and read it. We love the books at Mead Public Library. The place is special to us. It is our future. Give me the back, too. Give me the back. Libraries roll. Books, at, books are the key to our hearts. They make us smarter. Save our future. Don't shut us down, ever. We, we are second graders from Longfellow School. Okay, girls, you want to say something? Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead. 
Hmm. You're embarrassed? Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's all right. I think they got your message. Thanks, girls. Thank you, ladies. Next. Mayor, I won't make you come up. <laughs> I can't go up there. No, that's okay. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Mayor Ryan, um, Aldermen, and citizens for this opportunity to speak with you tonight. Um, my name is Maeve Quinn, and I'm a city resident. I'm also president of the Board of Trustees of Mead Public Library. Huh. Well, all of you are certainly in a very difficult position um, this month, really trying to find a way to balance the city budget. And you've been given lots and lots of financial details these last few weeks. Um, <coughs> these last few years, of course, have been quite challenging economic times for Sheboygan. And the library has done its best with the, with the reductions to its budget. The library budget submitted to this city is almost $100,000 less than last year's budget. The proposed 2012 funding is 7.8% below what is recommended for maintenance of effort, even though maintenance of effort is no longer in place. Additionally, library employees did not receive a general increase this year or for next year. For the last three years, library employees incurred a salary reduction of close to 2% due to the five furlough days. We have been good stewards of the money you have appropriated for the public library, and as was shared at a recent city finance committee meeting, we are now at a point where additional cuts may result in cutting more employees, which then, of course, will result in reducing the hours of the library services. As you're all very aware, the mission of the Mead Public Library is to be a community information and cultural center, and judging from the over 350,000 visits to the library this past year, we are continuing this mission to inform, educate, enlighten, inspire. Thank you. Thank you, Maeve. Thank you, Maeve. Next. Arthur. Well, my name is Arthur Zell, and uh, I had a couple things here, but I think what I'm going to do is uh, really make it simplified. It's like with the garbage pickup. Uh, I don't really uh, think it should be privatized for a simple reason. Uh, I'm looking at the idea of, well, the stability of the, uh, the price of how it's if it's going to even stay at a present level, if it were to be at that uh, time privatized, the uh, the reliability and the uh, quality in the in fall, winter, and spring, those are usually the worst times. And being that I'm disabled to start with, uh, and I do have a hard time getting around. It's usually uh, my concern, and uh, with the bu and with the budget, well, I feel that it's going to be more expensive in the long run for the citizens of Sheboygan to have this uh, privatized, because when you have something privatized, they can uh, skew the. Uh, the amount of money that uh, they charge, and sometimes maybe uh, like uh, with this uh, lady that was up here talking about uh, 16th and 17th Street with the garbage. Now I'm assuming that's that's done by a private company. Now, if that's something we got to look forward to, I don't think that's going to be really good quality. And uh, I, I understand about uh, you got to cut somewhere. It's just that um, maybe we can try and find a way to uh, uh, come to to an agreement with this, and maybe just maybe uh, we can uh, move forward in making our vehicles here. Even the buses and the uh, the trucks that are used more fuel efficient, that would cut it down greatly. Because I know sixty percent of the budget is fuel. So, 
this is what I'm looking at, and I'm and I'm hoping uh, that the rest of you look at look at the uh, fine print when you think about privatizing, because I don't think it's it's going to work very well for the rest of us, because we may end up eventually having individual bills instead of having one bill either on our taxes or, well, that's all I've got to say. Thank you. Thank you, Arthur. Thank you, Arthur. Next. Uh, why don't we have Mary Lynn <coughs> Donahue and Corey. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Mary Lynn Donahue. Um, I am pleased and honored tonight to be presenting to the uh, city clerk uh, petitions in support of Mead Public Library gathered by uh, many citizens who um, have felt a little frostbitten in the last couple of weeks. Uh, over 1,650 signatures on petitions requesting that library funding not be cut. And if I remember, Sue, I'll give these to you before I sit down. Okay, how do you Sheboygan? Well, 35,000 of us Sheboygan by having Mead Public Library cards. We make over 350,000 visits to the library. We check out almost 900,000 items on a yearly basis. We ask more than 36,000 questions of reference librarians, even though those services have been cut back. Almost a 1,000 of us every day look at the Mead Public uh, Library website. We use this library. It is important to the fiber and the culture and the spirit and the prosperity of this community. I expect many of you were at the Sheboygan County um, Economic Development Corporation gathering at Acuity this past week. Yours is a very difficult position. I, I guarantee you nobody in this room envies what you have to do. But like the SCEDC, you need to keep your eyes on the prize. And the prize is a beautiful, prosperous community. So when you drive through Sheboygan, you don't say to yourself, as you do in some counties or cities in, in Wisconsin, gee, I guess their property taxes aren't very high because the place looks like it's falling apart. Sheboygan is a lovely place. Part of the loveliness of the place is Mead Public Library. It has been cut. It has worked efficiently to reduce staff, to reduce costs, to keep a high level of service, although that has been compromised to some degree. But don't make this library, a place that's only open some of the time, that's known as the place where you can get old books, but not new books, the place where if you're lucky enough to find a reference librarian, you can ask a question, a place where you can't find an internet connection, you can't use a computer because those services just aren't available anymore. How do we Sheboygan? We Sheboygan by reading, listening to music, watching movies, learning about the world around us, communicating with our neighbors, and keeping our eye on the prize of the city of Sheboygan is a wonderful place to live. That's how we Sheboygan, and I, I do thank you for your time. Thank you, Marilyn. Thank you, Marilyn. Next. Thanks. Next will be Corey. Corey, can you give the audience your name, please? Sure. Uh, I'm Corey Andreessen. Um, City of Sheboygan resident. I moved to town about 12 years ago. We have young children. They're not as young anymore. We spent a lot of time at Mead Public Library. Since we moved to town, we've met other people who have moved to town. And whenever the subject comes up for the first time, people always, oh, isn't that a wonderful place? It's a real point of pride for the city of Sheboygan. And 
I've, you know, not, not only isn't it a wonderful library, but people have said, that was one of the reasons we chose to move to Sheboygan. The li- not just because of the building, though, I think. The library tells something about what our community values. It, a good, thriving library shows that we value knowledge, we value culture, we value ideas. And I think we need to keep valuing those things. And I know the budget is tight, and I know tough decisions have to be made, but when we look at what's happened at the the schools in the community, the library staff there has been decimated already by budget cuts. We've got library staff doing what two, two and a half people were doing a few years ago. It's anybody who thinks that the service hasn't declined because of that is deluding themselves. So we don't have any control over what goes to the public schools, what comes from the state, but we can control what we do with our public library here in town. And I think we really need to maintain that um, beacon for our city. Thank you. Thank you, Corey. Thank you. Next. Then we have, can we have Carol and Kathy Krieger? It's Kathy, yeah, Kathy's here. Carol, can you give everybody your name, please? Carol Dussault, 2736 North 30th Street. I came here tonight to, t- to speak on behalf of the Mead Public Library. Like all the other people who use it, I'm amazed constantly at all the things that the library does and provides. And it, considering all the budget cuts that have happened in the past few years, it's doubly a miracle. Um, you know, especially things like the Sunday hours. There are computer services that the children that I previously taught used quite a bit and often relied on, and those same computer services are now something that many of the unemployed in this town use and really need. The books are available. Most books that are in print are available in some way, shape, or form through the Eastern Shores Library Interlibrary Loan Program, which is an invaluable resource and used by many people very effectively. The children's room at Mead Public Library is stunning. The children love to go there. Kids of all ages love to go there. There aren't that many other cities that have this kind of treasure, really and truly. I think when the children of this town walk into that library, They not only feel valued for themselves, but they see the value of books and education, and they see that we value that too. We pass on that legacy to them. But I see now that if you cut the library further, you're going to start really dismantling this treasure. This is something that the city of Sheboygan can really feel proud of. It's one of the treasures one of the centerpieces of this town, and that's, as previously mentioned, people come here all the time and are amazed at what they find here. At this time, when everything is so polarized in our politics, I don't want this city to send a message that being informed and educated isn't a priority. Thank you. Thank you, Carol. And Kathy? Kathy, can you give the audience your name, please? Kathy Krieger. So our country is going through some pretty tough times. And during tough times, we often need to pull together as a community to overcome those times. We've been through bad times before, tough times. Our parents went through much worse times. And they made it. That's why we're all here. We can do it again. But I'm t- I want to talk about the library as a community center. During tough times, people seek out community. And they seek out places where they can go to improve themselves, to seek out others who can help them, to seek out resources that can help them. And and a library can serve that purpose. It's the closest thing to a community center this city has. I recommend the book Dewey. It's it's a nonfiction book about a library cat, but 
It talks about the, the times when the, we had the small farm crisis in this country. It's set in Iowa. And it talks about how that library became the community center that helped people through. People sought out the resources there to find other jobs because they couldn't work on the farms anymore. So I think we need to very carefully look at the funding, at cutting funding for the library. I think it's a very important resource and you shouldn't uh, do that rashly. And um, I think it's also a good idea that if you have to make cuts, that you remember that the people at the top earning scale have gained a lot over the last 30 years. And maybe those are the people that need to start making some bigger sacrifices since they got bigger benefits over the last 30 years. So maybe you want to look there. I also want to speak um, about privatization of, of our garbage service. I'm concerned about that. Uh, I think that you lose some accountability. Uh, we've always had good garbage service. I've lived in this city all of my life. I've never had to worry about my garbage not being picked up. The biggest worry I've had is getting it out on time for them. Um, they've done a great job all these years, and I'd like to see it continue that way. I've, I've read and heard about horror stories out east where some of these services are privatized and by not-so-nice characters, and then you have garbage piling up because of, you know, work stoppages and, and other political wranglings. So I would sure hate to see that happen to Sheboygan. I've, I, I've traveled a bit out west, and I've seen places where you dry, you, you're amazed by the garbage lying on the side of the road, and you can't believe that they can let their communities be like this. But you come here and you see that Sheboygan's a pretty darn clean city. Let's keep it that way. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you, Kathy. Next. That's it. That's all. Okay. Thank you, everybody, for speaking. We have a motion to close the hearings. Um, absolutely. Um, I move that, we, that the hearings be closed. Second. Second. We have a motion and a second to close the public hearings under discussion. Any discussion? All in favor of closing the hearings say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearings are closed. On to the consent agenda. Consent agenda 16-1 through 16-15. Vice President Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that RC, uh, all RCs be accepted and adopted and all resolutions and ordinances be put upon their passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to put 16.1 through 16.15 upon its passage under discussion. There is no discussion. Roll call, please. Corn? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Matichuk? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. And Belt? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Reports of officers 2, 1616 <coughs> lies over to November 28th. 1617 through 1620 to be referred. 1621 to be referred. Resolutions introduce 3, 1622 by Alderperson Kittleson, authorizing acceptance of 2012 Wisconsin's Bureau of Transportation Safety Seatbelt Enforcement Grants. Alderperson Kittleson. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I would ask for a motion to accept this grant and put the resolution upon its passage. Second. 
We have a motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. And under discussion, we can see this is a $30,000 grant. This is the third year in a row that we've gotten this grant to assist in developing the city's capacity to provide additional patrols engaging in high visibility enforcement of speeding and seatbelt enforcement. Thank you, Alder Person Kittleson. Any further discussion? There is no further discussion. Roll call, please. Carlson? Aye. Hammond. Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koss? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Matichek? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Belt? Aye. And Boren? Aye. And not 15, but 14. <laughs> Motion carries. 1623 by Alderperson Kittleson, authorized application for the 2012 Wisconsin DOT Bureau of Transportation Safety Data-Driven Approaches to Crime and Traffic Safety Grant Solicitation, Alderperson Kittleson. Thanks again, Mayor. I would ask that we accept this grant by putting the resolution upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. Under discussion, this is a $35,000 grant. Uh, I believe this is the third year in a row for this one as well from the Wisconsin Department of Transportation Bureau of Safety. Um, and this would uh, uh, be for deployment of resources to high visibility traffic enforcement based on local crime and crash data. Thank you, Alderperson Kittleson. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion? There's no further discussion. Roll call, please. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kuth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Matichek? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bercy? Aye. Belt? Aye. Boren? Aye. And Carlson? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries 1624 by Alderpersons. Hammond, Boren, Matichek, and Van Akron approving information technology. Technology Department Policy <coughs> IT-06, Vice President Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage. Under discussion, uh, Vice President Hammond, IT-06. Thank you. Um, this is a policy that has to do with social media, Twitter, Facebook, those types of things that as we go into that age and the city gets more involved in that, um, they felt it. And we felt the need to have that. And I'd just also like to make a comment. Uh, Dave did a great job putting this together, so thank him for his efforts. Thank you, Vice President Hammond. I'm familiar with Twitter myself. So, <laughs> Any further discussion? If there is no further discussion, uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. 1625 by Alderpersons Hammond, Boren, Matichek, and Van Akron, authorizing the Chief Administrative Officer to enter into contract for obtaining audit services. Vice President Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. If there is no discussion, roll call, please. Hammond. Aye. That would be you. Making sure. She's got okay. him down pat now. Heidemann. Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Matichek? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? No. Felt? Aye. Warren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. And Hammond? Aye. 13 ayes, 1 no. Motion carries. 1626 through 1630 to be referred. 1631 to be referred. Reports of committees seven. 1632 by law and licensing, making no recommendations on the taxi cab driver's license application number 9351 for Javier Yera. Um, person Vanderweel? Okay, at our meeting, um, we had the tie vote, so we were not able to give a recommendation whether to um, approve the license or disapprove it. I do believe that he is in attendance tonight. Okay. And um, so you could maybe talk to the whole council. Uh, Mr. Yera, would you like to come forward, please? Alderperson Vanderweel, can you tell us why the committee was 
unable to make a decision? Yes, um, he uh, revealed a 2008 domestic disorderly conduct, a 2008 bail jumping, a 2010 misdemeanor stalking, and a 2011 violate domestic violence order. He did not reveal a 2009 violate domestic violence order and two 2010 uh, disorderly conducts. We, the police department did have a concern as to the fact that um, there's quite a few uh, domestic things as well as felony stalking. And um, although it has to do with family issues, it, um, his, his wife is living in town and there was just, um, the committee couldn't decide, couldn't uh, make a decision either so, way. Uh, it was 2-2 two, two on the committee, I think. 2-2, two, two, yes. Okay. Mr. Yera, would you like to speak? Yeah, sure. Please. Um, what would you like to know? Um, why you, you know, if we can just have an explanation as to why um, uh, you think that uh, the council should approve this license and maybe explain some of the uh, questions that they may have regarding <coughs> regarding uh, what you revealed and what you didn't on the on the application? Well, I, I thought I did put it on. I mean, it's not a, uh, I want to say something I want to hide. I mean, I tried to list all I, what I could remember. Um, I even spoke to that lady over there and I tried to list everything that, you know, I could remember and I even went to the courthouse to pick up my uh, uh, criminal history and I brought it back to her and we went over everything and um, bottom line is I'm not trying to hide anything. I'm just trying to find employment here. I had two jobs from Milwaukee that I lost coming up here t to be with my wife and to try to tell everybody about our, our history would, it would take a very long time. Um, it's, it's, in, it's in depth and uh, it's, it, it goes further than what is on paper. You know, I have here a bunch of character letters that I have with me from other people that from the years have, um, have been in, uh, involved in our, our cases and things like that. And um, it's, uh, we have a counselors through our church that are working with us and things like that. So I don't think that it would be an issue for me to, uh, or, or recognize as an issue for me to be trying to stalk my wife or anything like that, because that's, it goes deeper than that, you know? And it, it wasn't, again, I just took the plea because it was such a good plea deal at the beginning. I, I should have fought the case because I probably would have won, but he gave me a deal, DA gave me a deal, so I took that. And like I said, I told him before that the only reason I, it, it went through is because I got revocated because of being in Sheboygan when I had court. Um, and that's the only reason everything got deferred and one thing led to another and that they had to give me the, the felony stalking. Um, but um, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think I'm a threat to anyone, my wife. I mean, she had one before and she, you know, this is something that she's done before and she, a day, the day of our, our divorce, which is June 17th of last year, she wanted to reconcile. She told her lawyer, her lawyer told my lawyer, and, you know, things turned around, you know. So it's, it's up and down with us, and, um, again, I've lost two jobs behind this, and to go home now is, uh, is probably harder now because I have a, a Christian-based organization that I'm with here. I'm with the Band of Brothers, and I do uh, the, uh, the upper room. And I do a lot of things with the love and marriage and the respect with the Emerson videos and things like that. So um, what's on paper is totally different, you know, and uh, it's, it's, it's difficult to just explain everything right now because it's, it's so up and down, you know, and it, it would take forever for me to explain everything in detail. Thank you, Mr. Yer. Are there any questions from the council? Alderperson Kath. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. Um, I was actually one of those no votes uh, based on the fact that you've been in the city of Sheboygan since March. Uh, you have no history of employment in the city of Sheboygan and the police department had uh, concerns with the felony stalking and uh, I based that on the, with my no vote. Thank, Thank you, you Alderperson Kath. Uh, the, the stalking was uh, with your wife? That's Alleged, where the charge yeah. came from before you reconciled with your wife? Right. And, and you're not and, reconciled. And we're not right now, no. You're not. She okay. went, at the time, um, when they, they said it was the, the stalking, she actually started speaking on my behalf with the DA, and, and that's why the plea was uh, two years probation, 20 days in jail. So that's how I went from a stalking to me having two years probation, 20 days in jail, because she spoke up for me. So that, that to me says a lot about my wife and how we are up and down and 
I mean, no one, no one's gonna say, yeah, he's stalking me, and then turn around and st stand up for you. You know, it's it's just up and down. Thank you, Mr. Yara. Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. Uh, Mr. Yara, what kind of work did you do when you were in Milwaukee? I was um, in the hospitality industry, hotel industry. I was um, hold, uh, I was the, the head doorman for the Fister Hotel for seven years, and I was at the Women's Club of Wisconsin for five years. And just current, or about a year ago, I was at the uh, Double Tree, uh, which was previously the Holiday Inn, and then before that, the Howard Johnson. So I've been in, in the hotel industry. Have you, have you, if I could follow up, Mayor, have you looked for any hospitality positions in Sheboygan? I have, but there hasn't been um, any, any turnouts, positive turnouts. Um, the, chain is, the chains are littler, you know, so all the little hotels, they don't have that many. Um, what, I did, what I was doing was valet, bellman, you know, uh, things like that, you know, shuttle driving, and, you know, Sheboygan's pretty small, and that's why I wanted to try to, try to do the, uh, the taxi taxi license so I can drive the, the limousines and he says well Santos I believe or Santana Santana I don't know why yeah Santana says that you know it, they do stuff here and they also go through to Milwaukee and I know Milwaukee pretty well and I mean that would be right up my alley is just to you know go to Milwaukee come back here and be based here and uh, and just go from there you know so are you so looking the hospitality to, service industry are you looking to go to work for Mr. Santana then Exactly. Okay. And this is the first step in a, in a long process, too, so it's, this is the first part of getting to there. So, Did I understand you correctly to say, tell the mayor that uh, you are presently with your wife or you are not? We're separated. You're separated. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Bourne. Any other questions? Alderman Reisler, please. Uh, I'm, I'm just curious how your driving record is. That's fine. Have you ever had your driver's license suspended or revoked? No. Not that I know of, no. Thank you, Alderman Raisler. Any other questions for Mr. Yura? You may step down, sir. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, if there are no more questions, no more discussion, <coughs> um, we will go to roll call, and I vote would approve the license. A motion. Oh, we need a motion first. Uh, do we have a motion on the floor to approve or deny? Vice Thank President. you, Mr. Mayor. I move that we approve the license for Mr. Yera. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the license for Mr. Yera. Any further discussion? If there is none, an I vote would approve. A no vote would deny. Roll call, please. Heideman? Aye. Cuth? No. Kittleson? Aye. Matichek? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? No. I'm sorry? No. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? No. Belt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Hammond? Aye. And Hammond? Aye. 11 ayes, 3 noes. Your license is approved, sir. You can go to the city clerk's office tomorrow. Thank you. Okay, moving on. 1633 by Public Protection and Safety recommending amending the code relating to certification of compliance with clear water requirements to add permit fees to require a written request for a clear water inspection and to further require a <coughs> permit fee for the same. Alder Person Kittleson. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'd uh, make a motion to put the ordinance upon its passage, please. Second. Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second to put the ordinance upon its passage. Under discussion? Uh, under discussion, Mayor, I just want to let you know that at Public Protection and Safety, we did have quite a lengthy discussion on the fee. Chad was there, as was our Chad from our planning department, as was Dan Benversi, our Clearwater Inspector, as to the reasoning behind putting this uh, fee on, and, uh, on, the, uh, uh, on the Clearwater requirement. Um, we know that uh, uh, Sheboygan Falls, uh, uh, Town of Wilson, have been used, doing these fees for uh, quite a while. And so uh, for accountability purposes, we're asking uh, that the fee be put on the Clearwater inspection. Thank you, Alderperson Kittleson. Thank you. Under further discussion, Alderman Raisler. I think that's from last time, sir. From last time, yeah. Old light. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, new lights, okay. Vice President 
No. Alderperson Kittleson, you're out. I'm out. Moving on. Alderman Sampson. That's a new one. <laughs> All right. New light. Mayor, he has new light, please. <laughs> um, first of all, I'd like to just say I, I, am, I am strongly opposed to attaching a fee to, well, to Clearwater Compliance. It's, it's, a, it's a compliance program that is required for all home sellers. Uh, as uh, Ms. Agnes Sorens came up, she said we have an increasing number of foreclosures, HUD homes, government-owned homes, bank-owned homes, uh, what have you. Uh, collecting fees uh, from those enti entities is very, very difficult. Uh, we face that on a daily basis in the real estate business right now, uh, myself being a realtor. Uh, one of the reasons, the, the main reason uh, that, uh, that this fee is being imposed is not just because uh, other areas, other municipalities are charging this fee, but or at least that's not what I'm aware of, but, but the main reason that we were told uh, was because there is apparently a high ratio of realtors, real estate professionals, or and or homeowners, home sellers, uh, that once they set up an appointment with the uh, city inspector to come and check out their Clearwater situation, um, they don't show up. Uh, so as uh, retaliation, in my, word, in, in my sense, is they're going to attach a $40 fee to the sale of every home for Clearwater compliance to help with the accountability of a small percentage of realtors uh, that may be repeat offenders in this situation. I believe there may be a better solution to this. Um, they also state that it may be easier for billing purposes to just attach it to all home sales, just to make it easier. Uh, but I, I believe uh, there are easier solutions, there are better solutions that if you have repeat offenders, go after the offenders, not on everybody else. So I, I think this is just a penalty uh, that's being imposed upon all home sellers and not just geared towards the folks who are the offenders in this case. So I would hope that, uh, that this at least gets voted no or at least some, some chance we might be able to put this on hold for further discussion with the Board of Realtors in uh, uh, for Sheboygan County. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Sampson. Alderman Bourne. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor Ryan. I would like to... Uh, open the floor to Chad Pelichek so we can kind of get the, uh, the city's uh, view on this fee. And I guess one of the questions I'd like to ask Chad is that if there is a closing, if a realtor has a closing on uh, a property, and let's say it's a month down the road, can't there be some kind of a deadline set up that the Clearwater inspection has to be done 10 days or two weeks before the closing? Uh, I'm just interested to see what Chad has to say. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Bourne. If I may ask first, Chad, the Clearwater inspection, is that a state-mandated inspection? Or the Clearwater that... program is a state-mandated inspection under the city's discharge permit as part of the stormwater. So that came about as trying to meet discharge limits as part of our NR 216 discharge permit. Um, the Clearwater program came into compliance, and the real issue we have is a lot of, and, and it's not a select few, there's a good handful uh, more of realtors that continually make appointments as well as homeowners and then they don't follow through on those appointments. We continuously hear, oh, I decided to go to Great America or wherever it might be, and they don't follow through. And getting back to Alderman Bourne's question, I think um, what, we're, you know, what we're seeing is that it is an accountability thing, and I don't know. We, we have people calling us on a Thursday afternoon, and they're closing at 10 o'clock on Friday, and that's continuous, and we're trying to reschedule the inspector and change things to make that happen. So I don't know how to put any kind of deadline or anything on there when they're continually calling us at the last minute before a closing to be able to close and 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 make, expecting us to come over there and if we don't it's you know they're calling the mayor they're calling me um, that we're not working with them so I don't you know this is a not something new the town of like Alderman Kittleson brought up the town of Sheboygan the town of Wilson charges thirty five dollars the village of Kohler charges fifty dollars they all have a written request and then you pay the fee and you do the app you do the appointment so that's what we're looking for we have a retirement of the plumbing inspector coming at the end of the year um, we'll be bringing on a new person after the first of the year and 
Um, it's going to be a lot for that person to learn. And it's not only Clearwater that this inspector is doing it. I brought up at Public Protection and Safety that at two years ago we had two plumbing inspectors. Now we're down to one plumbing inspector and doing Clearwater half the time and plumbing for new construction and remodels the, the other half the time. And to be honest with you, there's no way of catching up with paperwork. So it, the, the time is precious. There are 15-minute increments throughout the day, and that's you know what we're trying to do is hold people accountable, at least that they're there, they're on time, and they're not skipping the appointments. This, this fee for service, this would be something that would be included to the seller in the closing costs or the home buyer in the closing costs? The seller I, the seller in the closing costs. The seller in the closing costs. Okay. Thanks, Chad. Uh, further questions for Chad? Alderman Carlson. Thank you, Mayor. Isn't another issue you have is the uh, uh, multiple repeat visits to households? Correct. When we, a lot of times we'll go there, they'll do an inspection, there'll be five issues, four issues that need to be dealt with. They'll call us back and say the issues are taken care of. We'll go back there, they did one of the issues. Some places they make two, three trips there before it's in full compliance. So it's just a continually re- uh, inspection and that's why we laid it out as upfront we'll give you a forty dollar initial fee if we if there's issues and we go back and you take care of all the issues you pay nothing and if there's continue issues it's another forty dollars so a reinspection fee of the forty dollars plus the initial thank you Chad uh, Alderman Vice President Hammond oh, thank you mr. mayor um, I guess a, a couple things and nothing directed at Chad um, I think um, one of the things we need to be cognizant of is, is you know, the taxpayer shouldn't be in the, in the business of funding things that aren't necessarily for the common good. And I, that's where I think things like this. And hearing that, you know, realtors and individuals are scheduling appointments, not showing up. And these plumbing inspectors and city employees have a lot of things they need to do. Um, and I think their time is valuable as well. Um, $40 is not an onerous fee for someone selling their house. Um, and I guess I would make one other comment, um, and this is probably directed more at Alderman Sampson. As a member and a realtor, I have a real concern with, with you voting on this. I'm just going to say that publicly um, because you do have an interest in this, um, a financial interest in this. Um, but the, um, I, I, again, I fully support this. I think, um, again, it's not an onerous fee. Um, we're just, the city's trying to cover its cost, but also hold people accountable. Thank you, Vice President Hammond. Alderman Van Akron, nothing? I just wanted to hear from Chad. Alderman Sampson, did you have anything else? Yes, please. Um, thank you, Mr. Chad, Mayor. can you stay up here? Actually, just I, I disagree, Alderman. Um, Vice President uh, Hammond, this inspection has to be done regardless of whether this $40 fee is attached to it or not. Um, regardless of what I say, um, I have no financial stake in this whatsoever. I make no money off of these $40 transactions that are attached to this. Again, this is a certificate that has to be provided prior to a closing or at least at the closing where I cannot close whether this $40 fee is attached to it or not. So I, I will take a vote on that unless I hear otherwise. Um, but again, attaching a $40 service fee to this is not going to solve the problem. I'm not going to stand here today and say that there isn't an issue with realtors and individuals that do not show up for the appointments. But again, I, I think it needs to be addressed with those individuals, maybe attach a $40 service fee to their issue of not being able to uh, uh, stand with their schedule and that of the, uh, the city inspector. Uh, but I don't believe you should attach it to the sale of every single home. This is just attaching an additional fee. Uh, it, and, I, and I ask, where does it stop? If you're not happy with one other industry, what are you gonna find to attach onto that industry? Uh, whether it's real estate, car sales, liquor sales, uh, whatever. If you're not satisfied with the way they're doing things, you're just going to attach another fee. So I ask, where is it going to stop? If you're not satisfied with one, you're not going to be satisfied with others. So, um, again, I would just ask that you vote no. Thank you, Alderman Sampson. Thank you. Um, if I may just, you know, uh, the way I look at this, this is a, a, a fee for service. Uh, in my opinion, uh, fees for service are the most uh, fair form of taxation uh, that exists. If you use it, you pay it. If you don't, you don't. Uh, this is a fee for service. If you're selling your home, it needs the clear water inspection. It's mandated by the state that we have to do it. We have to provide the personnel to do it. I don't think it's anything uh, directed at any person or persons in the real estate business. Um, it's a fact of uh, 
Um, if we are paying inspectors to provide this service, um, it costs money to pay those inspectors. This is another, basically, a, a an unfunded state mandate that comes down that we have to perform these inspections when we sell homes. So, in my opinion, it, nothing, you know, whether this is as um, uh, uh, this clear water inspection or anything else. I mean, the most fair form of taxation out there is a fee for service. If you use it, you pay for it. If you don't, you don't. That's my own personal opinion. Any further discussion? Thank you, Chad. Okay, any further discussion? If there is none, um, we will take a roll call vote. An aye vote would pass, a no vote would not. Roll call, please. Kass? Abstain. Kittleson? Aye. Matichak? No. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? No. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Percy? No. Belt? Aye. Warren? No. Carlson? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. And Heidemann? No. Eight eyes, five no's, and one abstention. Motion carries. Sixteen thirty four lies over to November twenty eighth. Sixteen thirty seven and sixteen thirty eight to be referred. Reports of committee. 1635 and 1636 lie over till the 28th. Ordinances introduced 10, 1639 by Alder Persons Raisler, Versi, Kittleson, Sampson, and Decker, amending the 1975 Municipal Code so as to add a position to the table of organization in the Department of Public Works for the City of Sheboygan. Alderman Raisler. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I'd make a motion to move to suspend the rules, please. Second. We have a motion and a second to suspend the rules. Discussion on suspension of the rules. Is there anybody opposed to the rules being suspended or would require an explanation? If there is not, the rules are suspended. Alderman, Alderman Raisler. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd move that the ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to put the ordinance upon its passage under discussion. There is no discussion. Roll. Attorney McLean would like to chime in on this one. Um, many of you were at the Salary and Grievance Committee. I have the same concerns as I did then. In fact, this is even worse as far as I'm concerned. Uh, you're creating a new position that's uh, manager of public works that is in effect the department head position if you look at the position summary and the, and the duties, uh, yet there will still be a director of public works position on the table of organization that has the exact same duties. Uh, so I think it conflicts with the existing position of the director of public works. Uh, some specific issues with the uh, position summary, it says uh, serves as member of the plan commission and under our ordinances, the uh, this position nor the director of public works is a member of the plan commission, the city engineer by our ordinance and by, uh, by our, our ordinance is on the plan commission and not either the director of public works or the uh, manager of public works. Uh, I just see it. I, the, uh, the other issue I have is that uh, this in essence is going to be a department head position. Uh, you can call it a manager if you like, uh, but if you make it the head of the department, responsible for the department, it's a department head position. And statutorily, the mayor and the council have authority to uh, appoint department heads. Uh, under this proposal, the chief administrative officer, as far as I'm aware, would be making that appointment. And I think uh, you, you would be usurping your uh, authority there in appointing department heads. Uh, so those are my concerns. Uh, 
at the uh, committee, it seemed like the expedient thing to do to uh, uh, pass this. I just, and you can do what you want. I'm just letting you know that I see problems with it. I think you can do this in another manner uh, where you do away with the director position, the deputy director position, and then make it a manager that is in charge of the department. I see that as working, although again, I still have the concern with, uh, I believe it's within your prerogative and the mayor's prerogative to make the appointment to that position and not the chief administrative officer. And I think, that, again, that's statutory and not, not just uh, my opinion or uh, any ordinance. So make my comments, you do what you wish. I just want to let you know that uh, that's, I, I see it creating a problem. Uh, I haven't <coughs> brought this up in the past when we've created manager positions for economic development, uh, for human resources manager, because at, at that time there were still director positions uh, at the top of the uh, the table of organization for those departments and therefore uh, in my view while they were vacant the director positions were the department head and the managers were not but the, uh, as as things have progressed it's become obvious that the intent is to do away with the director positions and create managers in in place of that and i i think that's fine i think it's fine to do away with the term positions uh, the five-year terms make it uh, at will appointments, I, I think that that's fine. Reducing the salaries because they're not directors but they're managers, that's, that's perfectly, perfectly appropriate in these economic times as well. But uh, uh, I just, uh, by creating a manager position uh, and giving that manager all the duties of the director when you still got a director on the table of organization, uh, granted, that position won't be vacant, but it's still there, and uh, at least uh, logically, it it's inconsistent. Thank, Thank you. you, Steve. Under further discussion, Alderman Versi. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So, Steve, basically, would you suggest then waiting until January 1st when that director's position is vacated, eliminate position, and create this? Would that be kind of the fix? And also put into place that it's still the way it is today with the mayor and the council and city administrator being part of that all at the same time? Sure, I think you could do that sooner than January 1st. You could make it effective January 1st, but uh, do it sooner than that. Um, but I, like I say, those are the biggest concerns I have is um, the authority to appoint department heads is yours and the mayor's. Uh, I think I sent all of you uh, an opinion by, by email uh, last week on that. There's five different options you have, five different uh, ways to do it. Right now, it's uh, selection goes through Civil Service Commission, uh, recommends to the mayor, mayor appoints with council confirmation. You don't have to have the Civil Service Commission. That's totally up to you. Uh, but you need to have some, uh, some scenario of the mayor involvement or, or the council involvement or some combination of the two in, in the appointment. Yeah, in the in the past, we have uh, either uh, run these through the Civil Service Commission. This is an in-house promotion we're doing here. Um, obviously, everybody knows who the candidate is for this position, being Dave Beeble, who has a lot of experience. Um, the, you know, the way the statutes read right now that we have in the ordinances <clears throat> in the city, um, and and uh, in the past we would we would if we were interviewing multiple candidates we would have a hiring team of staff of the city which would be several people and then one person would be chosen from that um, and it would be that and that candidate would be uh, more or less chosen by a committee but chosen by the mayor and then put to the council for approval um, now we have our chief administrative officer Jim Amodio, um in, in, in this mix, with which this individual would report directly to Jim, 
Um, obviously, any decision that would be made would be um, coming out of the mayor's office would be in, in agreement between the mayor and the chief administrative officer before it was appointed, before it was um, uh, given to council for approval. So, you know, I, I believe uh, in, in, you know, there needs to be certain checks and balances in government. Uh, I don't, I, you know, I don't have a problem with a, an agreement of the mayor and the chief administrative officer and then approval by the council on, on, on a position such as this. Steve. Uh, I know Alderman Boren and I have been having some discussions over salaries for, uh, for mayors where you've got chief administrative officer. And I looked at the, uh, the statutes today, in fact, on uh, city manager council forms of government. That's, that's a different form of government, but under city manager form of government, the city manager does statutorily appoint department heads and others. Uh, but under a council mayor form of government, the mayor and the council appoint uh, the department heads, the officers of the city. Uh, I don't see any problem with the chief administrative officer providing recommendation to the mayor uh, or a list of three or however you want to do it, but uh, uh, I think that's how you need to do it is uh, the mayor and the council being involved. Under further discussion, Alderman Sampson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, this is for Attorney McLean. Um, so really, we have a, we have an issue here with keeping uh, of cre uh, we're, we're trying to streamline the whole entire table of organization. So uh, by creating this manager of public works, in addition to the other spots that are open, we have an issue with having all these spots at the top open. Right? We have one or two positions open since this manager is basically going to fill the positions of these spots, but we have still one, two, or three different positions open on the table. Right. Well, I, I yeah, my concern is logically you could do that, and that's what you've got currently in some of the departments, but you've still got a department head, but you, the manager is not on your job description the head of the department in those circumstances. You know, here you're clearly making the manager the head of the department when you still have the director and the deputy director on the, on the TO. And if you said in the job description here that the manager reports to the director of, of public works, I wouldn't have a problem with that. Then it's not a department head position. If I may follow up. Please. Thank you. Thank you. Then, then the procedure for eliminating those, those spots and cleaning those up now would be just a, it w w could you explain that procedure for, for working on those and who does it? And then is, is it a lengthy process that that's something we can take care of immediately and clean this all up? To, uh, to delete the public works director and the deputy public works director. Yes. I uh, do that by ordinance. And in fact, the, at salary and grievance, there are ordinances that were, uh, well, I don't know if they were drafted or not, but there was reference on the, uh, at least on the, uh, the agenda for deleting those two positions. Uh, that's just by ordinance. I mean, you've got to do it by ordinance uh, to delete those two positions, create a new position entitled manager uh, make the manager the head of the department. Um, uh, it's not that complicated to do. The, the one, there is one issue that arises in doing this, though, with, in this particular situation, is the residency requirement for department heads currently. Now, that's another thing that uh, you could address by ordinance. You could create an exception uh, for a newly created department head who is currently, you know, a current city employee that does not reside in the city. But in my view, uh, you know, right now you've got an ordinance in place that says all department heads have to reside in the city, period. It doesn't say, you know, there's any grandfather <coughs> provision for, for not doing that. Uh, and I know that creates some obstacle, although I, I don't think it's insurmountable for the uh, proposed candidate for the position. Thank you, Steve. I, I think the idea is to um, uh, create this position. Obviously, uh, the table of organization has changed significantly over the last couple of years. Uh, 
um, with creating managers' positions, with putting uh, the the former IT director um, initially under finance. Um, now we have the uh, our chief administrative officer that has everybody under him. But the idea is then to combine some departments where we have finance, uh, HR, IT uh, under you know one one department. Uh, so we're going to be making significant changes. Um, I believe that what we're doing now is we're filling some positions. We're going to have to change the ordinances on the back end of it and basically clean up the table of organization. I've still got one on my wall in my office. As a matter of fact, there's one right up there. Uh, what we're doing right now in the city hardly looks like that chart, like that octopus. We're going with more of a straight line organization. So, um, you know, to create this position, I don't see a problem with it, whether it's a manager or director. This is the head of the Public Works Department. Um, and, uh, yeah, and, and I, I don't think uh, that uh, it's all that complicated, to tell you the truth. Alderman Bourne, did you have something else? <coughs> Thanks, Mayor. Uh, not to uh, get away from this uh, Public Works uh, manager, but what was the process that we, j we just used to hire the, uh, the uh, manager of HR? Was that a... Was that did that come through the Civil Service Commission or how was that how was that appointment handled and do we still have the HR director on the TO but now we're going to have a manager so we got we got the same thing there right yes uh, although it's my understanding that yes there's still a director of human resources on the table of organization and I believe the HR manager position uh, was. The interview process and the appointment was through the chief administrative officer and the uh, HR consultant. Um, the one thing with human resources, uh, I think there's been discussion about making that a division of the finance department, like IT, where uh, under that sort of scenario, that would not be a department head level position anyway. The manager would be like a division level. Uh, so same issues don't really arise there but yeah you still got the director of human resources on the table of organization uh, you've got the director of community development still on the table of organization uh, I think yeah if, if you recall when when we began with the the whole idea of, of uh, changing some directors positions to managers positions um, you know we had the 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 HR director uh, with two people under them. We had the IT director with four people under them. And the idea was to take uh, those positions and turn them into managers' positions and to put them on, you know, put them, uh, which we did with IT. IT was under finance, and we got rid of that director's position. And, and that's, you know, that was the idea of creating managers' positions in the city. Alderman Bourne, please continue. If I could follow up. Uh, also, uh, uh, Attorney McLean brought up the concern that the uh, the uh, public works manager is going to serve on the uh, city plan commission and the capital improvements commission. Uh, who, whose idea is that? And another concern I have is that this idea by the chief administrative officer was never vetted with the public works committee at all. The first I found out about this, and I don't think other, even Alderman Heideman as my vice chair knew that this was even going on until it was on the... Uh, Salary and Grievance Committee agenda, and I thought that you know perhaps the courtesy uh, should be extended to the committee chairman, at least the vice chairman, and then bring it before the committee for us to give our ideas on this. We were totally bypassed in this. As I said, the first I knew about this was when it was on the Salary and Grievance agenda. But getting back to my original question, uh, whose idea is it for the? Uh, Public Works Manager to serve on the City Plan Commission and the Capital Improvements Commission. The uh, Director of Public Works, I believe, has always uh, served on the City Plan Commission. Or Capital Improvements. City Capital City. Improvements Commission. Yeah. Yes. Not right, but not on, not on the City Plan Commission. Right. That's correct, although I did look at the ordinances uh, last week on that. And it's still, the ordinances call for the city engineer to be on the Capital Improvements Commission. I think uh, that's something we need to clean up because I believe the, the uh, director of public works has served on the Capital Improvements Commission for a number of years. Uh, mm -hmm. but, um, but not on city plan. Not on city planning. But now it's being proposed that he also be on 
city plan. Well, that's in there. I don't know <coughs> why that's in there. Couldn't tell you. I guess that's my question. Who who proposed that? So it's news. That's news to us also on the public works committee. Uh, this is this in the job description, Alderman Bourne? Yes, it is. This, uh, would, have, this would have come through. Uh, so. Number number three. Number three on typical duties. Uh, I didn't even notice it until uh, <coughs> Attorney McLean uh, made mention of it tonight. This would have come through uh, salary and grievances then that way. Well, I get, um, the question I would, I would just follow up, is there any problem for the people that are on the City Plan Commission? Is there any issue or problem with the public works manager serving on the City Plan Commission? Does that create any issues? Uh, Chad, Chad would like to speak on this. This isn't against the candidate for the position, but the reason I think the city engineer had been on the uh, plan commission is because a lot of the pro, uh, projects that come forward, the new development, are re directly related to stormwater drainage and erosion control. And historically, the city engineer had been the one that uh, would approve those. So he was aware of those as those issues came forward to make sure that there was no... Um, you know, issues from that perspective. Now, the, the Dave could very well take that uh, role over, um, but I think the reason it was is the city engineer has, at one time when the departments were combined and engineering was part of planning, you know, it was kind of like this one-stop shop. Um, but I, you know, I don't think at this stage it matters who it is, but that's historically what has happened with new development projects related to stormwater and erosion control because in the end, uh, their department is the one that, or division is the one that approves those plans. So it could be one or other, but not necessarily both. Probably correct. Who would you recommend? <laughs> Mm -hmm. I, they're both capable. Well, I understand I mean, that. But Ryan has historically been the city yes. plan member, so as a city engineer. Then why change it? Yeah, I don't know. Thank you, Alderman Board. Thank you. Alder Person Kath. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. Uh, just for an understanding, if you're a department head and you're called the director of public works or the manager of public works, there's still a, a requirement to live in the city of Sheboygan. No. So by, ch by calling it a manager of public works, then you no, no longer have to live in the city of Sheboygan. Is that my understanding? Well, not if it's the head of the department. It's, if it's a department head, the ordinances call for all the appointed department heads to live in the city. But the manager of public works is a department head, correct? Well, We're under the proposed uh, job description, yes. In fact, that, that was the concern I had that it, this job description conflicts with the current director of public works position, uh, which is still on the table of organization. So you can't. You can't, in theory, have two people that are head of the same department. You know, don't get me wrong. I'm not against having managers at all. I just think, in order to do that, you need to clean up the table of organization. Well, and that's and, and that's While that's where we that's it. where we stand right now is the 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 uh, uh, hiring of, of employees and uh, the the reworking reworking of the table of organization is working faster. Uh, then the ordinance is catching up with it. Okay. Alderman Sampson. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, then, then what's to stop us then from just cleaning up the table of organization as we go? If we're just going to, if we're going to create a management position, can we just <coughs> clean it up as we create these positions so we don't have to deal with this lengthy discussion? Because we're yeah. going to run into this again. <coughs> Yeah. If, if, I, if I can explain one thing, I mean, part of the reason that this is accelerated today um, is because uh, we had uh, uh, Director Bill Bittner, uh, who um, was the Director of Public Works for several years. Um, Bill um, is retiring at the end of the year, on, on the 31st of the year. Uh, with the transition that we're having in Public Works with the number of retirements that we have, 
uh, with the the department being in, in a state of flux, more or less. I, I you know we have twenty plus retirees in that department. Uh, we're looking at uh, what services may be contracted out. Uh, Hiring new employees, promoting people, redoing the table of organization within the Department of Public Works, um, that we we decided that it would be better to have uh, Dave Beeble in charge because people were going to Bill with questions, people were going to Dave with questions. Um, if Bill is leaving at the end of the year, it did not make any, any sense that Bill is making these decisions when Dave is the guy that's going to be living with them. So that's why this is, is where it's at today. Uh, in order to create this position for Dave, uh, that Dave is clearly in charge of the department and can and can move this department into the future, if that explains, you know, uh, we can we can clean up the table of organization and the ordinances after the fact, uh, with deleting the other positions, and with uh, redoing the table of organization. Vice President Hammond, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm not a big fan of um, moving things back to committee, and I understand what you were just saying. I think, though, as deputy director, he's got um, at least some clout there as, as uh, Director Bittner's on his way out. I think with the concerns and some of the things that are brought up, again, I'm not a big fan of moving <coughs> things back to committee, but maybe that's where it needs to go, um, have some of these conversations, get those things cleaned up, and bring one document back on what would be December 5th or something like that. Um, and get it done then. Um, it's just my thoughts. Maybe it needs to go back to committee. That's, that's probably not a bad idea, and I think at the same time we should refer it to Public Works um, and to Salary and Grievances once again. Is that a motion? If, I'll second it if it's a motion. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> you motioned. Alderman Boren seconded. <clears throat> that we re refer this uh, to Public Works and to Salary and Grievances. Always. All in favor of ref Dave, would you like to speak? This is the deputy director slash director slash manager of public works, Dave Beeble. <laughs> Thanks. I d the one thing I just want to clear up is whatever you decide, the residency issue does not affect me. My wife and I were fully prepared if whenever this would happen that if we did have to move, we would move. So I don't want that to come out that this is being created that I don't have to move into the city. Uh, we, that was fully, I guess, our intent if I ever got the promotion someday in my career, that that was a, a distinct possibility. So I just wanted to let that everyone know that it's not the case. Thank you, Dave. Okay, uh, we have a, a motion and a second to refer back to committees. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Moving on. Where are we at, 40? Yep. Okay, 1640 lies over. 1641 by Alderperson Kittleson, amending the municipal code so as to create section 2646 relating to the registration of vacant buildings. Oh, I'm sorry, that will be referred. As a matter of fact, 41 through 44 will be referred. Matters laid over 11. 1560 RO number 249 1112 by the city clerk submitting as a matter of information the estimated cost for a potential may, pro, potential recall primary and primary <coughs> and or recall election of the mayor. Thank you Mr. Mayor. I uh, move to accept and file. Second. A motion and a second to accept and file under discussion. There's no discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. 1518 lies over to November 28th. 1519, our own number 251-1112 by the City Plan Commission amending the city's zoning map to change the use district classification of property located at 1216 Union Avenue from NR Neighborhood Residential to NC Neighborhood Commercial Classification. City Planning, Alderman Sampson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the RO be accepted and placed on fire and file and the, move, the ordinance be put upon its passage. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Under discussion, we have Alderman Boren. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. Uh, after listening to the concerns of the uh, two people that spoke tonight, 
I'm wondering if the Planning Commission had any discussions <laughs> in changing that zoning. Is there any immediate plans for that because of the change in zoning, or is it <coughs> just being done for future considerations? Um, the Planning Commission uh, discussed this. What uh, the plan is, this is a, a vacant home uh, sitting next to the property where this uh, convenience store gas station is located. Uh, their plan is to demolish the home and to expand this into a, another entry exit, if I'm not mistaken, Alderman Sampson? Correct. Uh, so we didn't, uh, we didn't see any issues with it on city planning right now. It is a vacant property. Uh, Chad? Do you have something on this? What the mayor just stated is absolutely correct. It is a vacant property. What they're looking at doing in the future is raising the property and using it as a turn lane for semis and delivery trucks that come into the parking lot because currently they have to back off of Union Avenue and out into the street to try to maneuver and make it around there. And I guess what I wanted to do is follow up on the other person that spoke at public forum, uh, the public hearing in regards to the trash issues. Um, that's definitely something that can be taken care of as part of the conditional use permit once this rezone is approved or denied. But if it was approved by this body, um, they'll have to go through the conditional use process through the Planning Commission, and that can be a condition of the requirement allowing them to proceed is to deal with the garbage issues in the dumpster and kind of you know force them that way to take care of that. As for the first gentleman that spoke in regards to the house, it has been vacant for, I believe, five years um, and has been in disrepair. So, um, you know, there, there hasn't been anybody living there. Uh, and it's really to make the maneuvering of traffic off of Union for trucks coming into this spot a little bit easier. So there's a way of taking care of some of the concerns um, of the neighbors and the public uh, as part of the conditional use process. Thank you, Chad. For Alderman Sampson? Everything was covered. Thank you. Any further questions? If there are no further questions, roll call, please. Kittleson? Aye. Matichek? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? No. <clears throat> Belt? No. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. And Koth? Aye. 12 ayes, 2 noes. Motion carries. Other matters authorized by law, 1645, an RO by the city clerk granting various licenses. Vice President Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, move to accept and file and approve licenses. Second. Motion and a second to approve under discussion. If there is no discussion. Roll call, please. Matichek? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Ben Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Abstain. Belt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. And Kittleson? Aye. 13 ayes, one abstention. Motion carries, 1646 to be referred. Other matters authorized by law, Attorney McLean? 1647 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2012 and June 30, 2013. That will be referred to law and licensing. 1648 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a communication from Alderperson Born being a survey of mayor salaries from various municipalities. And there's a, uh, an updated version for the document. Uh, is this referred? I think I have a referral on this. Referred to Committee of the Whole. Referred to Committee of the Whole. That is all. Do we have a motion to adjourn? We will reconvene at five minutes to nine for the Committee of the Whole meeting. Thank you. For the Committee of the Whole meeting, or we will convene, period. So, motion to adjourn. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Hey, you must be like a second that we go anywhere, all right? Of course. Last time.